I wanted to show you some of the things I do to spruce up a guitar track after recording the part live from my MIDI keyboard. These are little details I add in later for that final polish. Here's what the guitar track sounds like right after recording it. So obviously that part would probably repeat and then have some variation or whatnot. Um, when I play in my guitar tracks, I don't like using things like key switches in real time or lots of MIDI CCs, you know, beyond the pitch wheel, mod wheel, and maybe the uh, sustain pedal. Uh, I prefer to just play things in as straightforward as possible and then edit it as needed afterward. So let's look at some details and nuances we can add. I usually start out by thinking about some different articulations that I could add in just to make the track more dynamic. So in the case of this part, um, I'm thinking I want to have some palm muting in there. Um, you know, some of the shorter and quieter notes um, would definitely be good, good, uh, good candidates for palm muting. So sometimes I like mapping the palm mute articulation to a low velocity range. Um, and that makes it very convenient and intuitive, you know, to just play in the palm mutes. But the downside is then you lose that soft dynamic in the open sustain articulation. So in this case, I'm going to map it to a key switch. And that just gets automatically mapped, you know, by default. Um, as close as it can to the uh, main playing range. So in this case, a C-sharp 1. So I'm, I know already that I want to have uh, this short little note here played as a palm mute. You know, since it's practically a ghost note. So let me go down here and create a C-sharp. the same right here right so right here and you can see which articulations are getting triggered by that little icon that appears you know on the left side of the uh, articulation name and then I want to try having well, this note is could definitely be a palm mute right there, but I want to try having palm mutes on some of these last notes just for the uh, kind of percussive attack that it gives those notes. So let me make that C sharp right here. I hope that's a C sharp. Yeah, and then uh, I will put palm mutes on those last two notes. But I don't want this note to be played as legato, and you can see it's overlapping with this previous note. So I'm gonna, going to just create a little bit of separation between those. And then I'm going to bring down the volume to kind of even them out. Right? Um, okay, cool. So I think that's all the palm muting I want to do. Uh, let's see what else. Let's get into the uh, slides now. Um, so in this case, I'm going to use the velocity slide articulation. You know, that's where the velocity of the destination note determines the speed of the slide. So it's pretty easy to um, control the speed of the slide um, just from the velocity of the MIDI data here. Whereas the quarter note, eighth note, sixteenth note, those are all tempo synced. Um, so let me map that to a key switch. And that got put on C1. Uh, and then... I think these right here, those little hammer-ons, I should definitely try those as slides. I think that they will work well. So let me put a um, C1 right there and right there, and let's hear what that sounds like. Cool, I think that'll work well. Um, I just want to speed them up, so I'll grab all four of those notes and bring up their velocity to make the slides faster. And then I'll try putting a slide right here and bring up the velocity of that. Okay, uh, let's see if there's anywhere else. Oops, I 
must have accidentally created a note right there, that F sharp. Um, yeah, let's delete that. Um, okay, so I think that's it for the slide articulation. Now what I want to think about is the slides that might be happening between some of the notes here. And using a key switch might not be so practical when creating slides between you know some of these notes because I've got a lot of other note data happening. Um, you can sometimes squeeze in a really short key switch to just grab that note and create a slide, but in cases like this, um, I'll usually just sequence a uh, chromatic series of notes to create the slide manually. So what I'm talking about are slides between, you know, notes mm. like, you know, looking at this very lowest note here, the B that moves to the A. Um, what I'm envisioning is the guitarist's hand as it kind of shifts between notes and, and more specifically chord positions. Um, so I'm going to create a slide that goes from this B down to the A, and it's going to be pretty subtle, but I want to see how that sounds. So I'll create that A sharp and then the A, and I'll bring the velocity down a bit. And let's hear what that sounds like. So I might want to have it a little bit faster. Just move those over. And that's kind of the, you know, guitarist hand shifting in preparation of playing this uh, A chord right there. That's good. That really adds a lot. And then let's uh, go here. You can see these chords. You know, the, the guitarist would probably be shifting chord positions for those, too. So I'm going to take that lowest note and, uh, and definitely experiment with... Uh, you know, different speeds of slides, uh, as well as different velocities. Okay, uh, let me make those a little bit more subtle. And then definitely there as well. And then I could probably do that same slide down right here and then bring the velocity down okay cool yeah i think that really adds a lot um the other thing that you can do is look at some of the other notes as they move and then uh you know, create slides there too. So for example, this B kind of moves to an A. Now I might want to create a slide, but you know, you might not want to overdo it, you know, too. So uh, it really just depends on how much of that you want in your track. Um, the other thing that you can do is some of these notes here have spaces between them just because I played them in uh, from my MIDI keyboard. Whereas on a guitar, those notes might be ringing the entire way until they get, you know, plucked again. So let me just move that note there and, you know, stretch it out uh, and hear what that sounds like. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so let's see. Finally, let's look at what sort of uh, performance effects we can add in, you know. So in this case, I'm kind of... Uh, envisioning the guitarist keeping time, you know, kind of uh, with a, a string slap kind of deal there. Um, you'll hear what I'm talking about. So especially right when this note ends, you know, they're kind of emphasizing the two and four. So let me go up. It's uh, that key right there. Uh, let me Let me find it. So sometimes I might just record a second pass, you know, of effects and play it in through my keyboard. But if you only need a couple effects, you can just sequence them in. Let me bring down the velocity. So the other thing that you can do is use these effects to kind of emphasize um, some of the hits, uh, some of the chords, so like, like right on that note, 
you know, we could put that in there. You know, so it might be sort of a string slap, or really it's sort of them, them you know, tapping the strings. Um, but I could also try a, one of these muted uh, string chug type sounds. Oops. Right. But that might be a little bit too heavy handed. So I'll bring down the velocity and then move it back a little bit. We'll, we'll hear what it sounds like. If that doesn't work, I'll move back to just using a uh, string slap. Uh, a little bit out of time. I mean, it's not bad, but it makes it sound a little bit too messy. So I'll try just using a uh, string slap instead, just to emphasize that note. And then, you know, you could, and technically you could put them on all the twos and fours. It just might be a little bit overkill, but. Right. I'll bring them up so you can hear what I'm talking about. So it's not bad, but you know I might want to use those a little bit more, a little bit more sparsely. Um, let's just play through the uh, entire track, uh, you know, one more time. Oh look, here's another uh, mystery note. <laughs> I must have uh, accidentally added that at some point. All right, so here's what it sounds like uh, with all those changes. <laughs> Well, I think that came a long way, you know, from the original recording. And really, you don't have to spend a lot of time tweaking stuff. Um, I was just kind of showing you all of the different points that I look at, you know, when editing a MIDI track after recording it through my uh, MIDI keyboard. I hope this video was helpful and stay tuned for more.